Ready? Take one. Action. But shout out to my man JB. Put me on. Tell me to come through. My man hit me up. Told me to come through for this opportunity. I'm about to pull up on him at University of Penn. And we're going to get busy. Feel me? Shout out Vibes Barbershop. We here. JB in the building, on. as you see. Appreciate you taking this on, bro. All right, it's not an easy day for no man. It's a day I've been waiting for, you know what I mean? I was in the crib and I was just like, oh man, this is the opportunity. Yeah. Time to get right. NCAA championships are next week, or actually this week. They start where, Thursday. In Detroit. Where they at? In Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, I was looking at that. So they, they take off tomorrow. And so typically, like at a time like this before a big tournament, everybody wants to get fresh, but these guys are college guys. One, they don't have a lot of money. Two, there's not a ton of barbers here in University City. Mm -hmm. And they all just kind of scatter and go try to find it. So I'm like, man. Yeah, I know how that. Doing? I cut a couple of the Drexel guys um, for the basketball team. We cut yeah. like eight of their players. So I know, how that, I know how that goes. Are you going to be there in Detroit with them? Yeah, I'm going out. Oh, that's love. Have you been working out with these guys? Yeah, I work with them every day. Every day, that's love. Every day. So that's where I train full time. Just right here at the plus they got a wrestling room. And then right next to the basketball facility. I'm gonna go first. Oh, yeah, you is gonna yeah, cut? So I'm gonna get cut first, get chopped up. We were just asking, like, it was like, I, I can't have you come through without me getting fresh. So <laughs> got got you. Had to get some. You feel me? We official, bro. <laughs> we official. I'm here with it. We got JB in with us and G with us. Y'all wanna see Tokyo Drift? Ready? Nah, I'm yeah. playing. <laughs> Bang this John up. Nah, I'm tough. That's your girl all the way there. I wouldn't want to show up my, my drifting skills here. That's the only reason why. That's what I got you. Got Reddit on D here. So you guys on the vlog? Yeah, you on the vlog. That's right. I had to get to the YouTube. You got a YouTube channel too? Nah, I don't. This is actually going to go on the, um, on the Vibe page, but hi, mom. I'm on YouTube, not TV yet. <laughs> But actually, I ain't take it seriously until I got into the barbershop that I'm at. How do you learn? Like, is it practice? And my little brother's dad was a barber. Like, every time I got suspended in school, I would just have to go to the barbershop and, like, sweep up. I wasn't allowed to sleep in the barbershop. So he would just be like, yeah, you got to do something because you're not going to sleep. And I would just make sure I would watch. I would watch everybody that was good. If you was corny, I wasn't watching you. But I forgot. Shout out to my man, Relentless. My man, Ed. This is um, Cloven Brand. College, me and a buddy, like we, Nebraska. we split. There was no shirt, there was no one shark for a while. So when we first got to college, we were coming from Jersey and Philly and then going to Nebraska. We had no like, body for a super place. particular way we wanted, you know, the high art on our side. We wanted a fresh fade, we wanted a really sharp line. Gosh, and nobody did it. So we just went half season, bought some clippers, we got like some walls and some handies. And uh start giving each other haircuts. Like, cut each other's hair. So you start. Now what you're telling me sharp. I would say I'm sharp. But I can make myself. Man, great. one day we're gonna have an episode where JB cutting, all right? Bro, Rick, come through. He gonna come through cutting at the Boss Barbershop. Right, vegan, the only person that let me cut his hair. Bro. Vegan. <laughs> so this is like your third home? Yeah, so. And this is not over in Nebraska. This so is not over I grew up in South Jersey. Mm -hmm. I was there until I graduated high school, went to college at Nebraska. I stayed in Nebraska for 15 years. So I left at 17, came home at 33. And so I spent half my life there. But Philly was always like, whenever I come back to visit my family, this was always kind of like the spot that I would pull up and train. When you first like, you just walked in, right? As a, um, a walk-in, like did you look up on look us up on Instagram? Yeah, I looked you guys up. I, I looked you up. Like I don't, I don't play when it comes to it. Like yeah, trying to find the right spot. So you found like, you searched so up like looking, Philly Barbers or something? I was looking like Philly Barbers. First I was just trying to go close. Someone sent me that In The Cut app. So I'm like scrolling through everybody's pages and once I find their name, I go to, I type it in the Instagram. I go to the IG. I found the Vibes page. And I was like, damn, these are sharp. It's crazy that I don't even have like The Cut app. Yeah. yeah I don't even have that. And it was, it was random bro because, I'm, I say this respectfully, but typically when you go in a shop, the first dude to be like, I got you. It's usually not the sharpest dude, right? But when you got me and you cut me, I was like, damn, this hair, this looks good. Yeah. I even hooked it up. So it made me feel good. I'm like, I'm going back. This is my spot. When he walked in, he, nobody even knew who he was. Which is great. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that was the best part. Hey. Wow. 
Hey, how are we doing today? Good. Kevin, this Lou. is Lou. Hi, Lou. Lou's going to be chopping us up today. Hi, I'm Chris. How are you doing? I know, Laura was like, that's fire. <laughs> She's changed the sheet. It's fire. Make me not. How do you feel? I feel good. I'm about like, to get busy, man. I'm about to get the word. You want yeah. to set up over here? Do you want us to set up in here? Do you want us in the locker room? Like, what do you, what do you think will be best? Oh, no, this is fine. Is this okay? You want to, uh... Yeah. Can you plug that in for us, please? Yeah, yeah, I think he's got a bunch of wireless cords, so he won't be needed too much, but he's got a thing or two that he might need plugged up. Thank you. Kevin, who's the toughest guy you ever coached? Well, Johnny Curtis, I, I coached at the 96 Olympic trials. Okay. He was a big guy, probably 97 kilo. We coached together at George Mason. He was just fearless. The, the first match, he had Joel Sherritt. He ended up, like, teching him. First period. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, Johnny went on to fight in the um, CFF, and uh, he ended up becoming a heavyweight champion in there. Nice. Yeah. What's up, man? You already know. We at the University of Pennsylvania. About to cut the wrestling team. Got some Andy's brand new. About to put them to work. Feel me? Some real hitters. Yes and no. Yes, you because you know exactly what to do. Mm. But yes, but because it's you know you gotta be really disciplined. You eat whatever you on a trip night, like not still like normal food. I just I try to eat all like organic, sustainably and you know, responsibly raised and grown, grass fed, mm. no preservatives. But I still like normal stuff, bro, like I'm in Philly. I want pizza and pretzels and cheese federal donuts, like all that stuff, <laughs> I like it all. I haven't had a cheesesteak yet since I've been back. Everybody what? keeps telling me. Where you been back for like? I know. Well, like, I've been to I've a been couple of good steak spots though here in the city. Um, so like because I eat healthy, my favorite spots are like Kava, Dig, Honey Grow. Um, those are the spots that I eat at most often. Like on a Monday, I don't know if I cut like Five, six. Thursday, Friday, Saturday is my business reviews. Do you do walk-ins? Um, like Saturday or King? Like if I, I just walked in, could you get a spot or not? Nah, it's too crazy. Um, starting now, probably when I first met you, it was around the time where it was like, yeah, I got you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Around the time I started coming here, that's when I started like I started seeing myself being more booked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't use enhancements because they're wrestling. You feel me? You don't sweat that off. All Just natural stuff. The hairline be dripping all down. All natural. Right during practice. <laughs> Ready, Brody? Yep. All right, what you looking for? Uh, gotta get them all out. Got you. you wanna um, you keep in the sides? You wanna uh, like blow it out all the way? Take away the sideburns? Just keep, just the goatee? Like point these down, I guess, like right there. Mm -hmm. So you you don't want it fully bald. You just want mm -hmm. you still want to see the shape up. Correct. Got you. And then blow the back out. Yeah. How about shave that out and keep this? Keep this. Gotcha. You're not a you're not a um a wrestler, right? You're not gonna be competing this week. I am. Oh, you are? I'm not. Uh, not Thursday, Friday, Saturday. How was the experience of you like being the training partner? It was cool. You good? I mean, I, I've been I've been JB's training partner for stuff before. Um, I, I was I did it the first time when I was in high school. This most recent time was cool. It was in Norway. He had just moved to Philly too, so. It was good. Yeah, it felt good, right? Yeah. How long you been wrestling? All your life? Uh, yeah. I started when I was four. Four years old? Uh, I didn't even know you could start at that age. I thought you had to be like seven years old. <laughs> well, like when you compete, you have to be that old. What, seven? Yeah. yeah. You can practice it like whenever you want. So I would go with my brother a lot and uh, and practice with him like up until I could start competing. Uh -huh. So the wrestling is in your family, huh? Yeah, my dad and my brother wrestled. They wrestled in college or no? No, no you? just high school. Yeah, I was the only one wrestling in college. Oh, so you the goldest of the family? A little bit, yeah. I'm also the youngest. You've been out the country for wrestling, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Like, what was this, the coolest place you traveled? Coolest place? Yeah, like the best. Um, you was like, wow, like this right here is like a different type of vibe. As far as like completely like, like a culture shift, Slovakia. Um, <clears throat> that place was intense. It's like just really old and beat down. Mm. Um, the arena we, we wrestled in was like seats were cracking in it. Like, it was it's bad. Crazy. Yeah. How long have you been cutting hair? Uh, since I was 17, I just turned 21, so about, going on like, I want to say four years, but going on like, going on three years. I can say, I think I've been taking it serious for about two. I ain't started cutting my own, I started cutting off my little brother's hair, and then I started, um, start cutting friends' hair and all that. Like, I was literally a, a basketball player one week, and then like, the next week I was just like, I don't, I don't play ball no more, I cut hair. Mm-hmm. And my friends used wow. to be like, like, yo, bro, you crazy, like. <laughs> I was supposed to go to Central Penn. Uh huh. That's the hoop, but I just didn't. I literally stopped hooping my senior year. Didn't even touch a ball my senior year. Wow. That's enough. Yeah, crazy. You love it. Yeah. Starting point guard, captain of the basketball team. Mm hmm. To literally not even trying mm-hmm. out for my senior year. Did you coach Chris? My coach was heated. <laughs> and so was my AAU coach. Because my AAU coach was the coach that, um, that, like, he was the head coach of Central Penn, so he was going to just. Basically, throw me an offer just because I've been. I was like, yeah. I was a point guard for the last four years. Yeah. All high school. So he was just gonna throw me that offer, but I just told him I was like, wasn't playing here. Crazy thing is, I'm so cool with him, but he told me like the weirdest thing. He was like, like we're gonna see where you end up at. So if you're watching this video, I'm not gonna say anything because I show you love. But if you watch this video, you know who you are, man. I'm not making it, but I'm I'm on the way up. You're getting there. I'm getting there, <laughs> yeah, man. That's right. Coach was like, what you think, you gonna be a barber? I just cut hair. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be sharp, but like, I'm yeah. gonna be cutting. I didn't say famous people here, cause I was like, I ain't worried about that. I was like, bro, I'm gonna get bread, you tripping. Yeah. Like the first time I cut his hair, my giant even know who he was. Like, yeah. Like, first time cutting his hair, he came into the barber shop with no appointment as a walk in. He didn't want nobody, I guess, to know who he was. Mm-hmm. And people was like, saying like, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy. I just looked at him and I was like, I got you. He hopped in my chair. Mm-hmm. And that's how I started. Little did you know. Yeah, little did I know. Yeah, he's... He was him. Bro, you know what's crazy? I didn't know who he was at all. I cut his hair right now. I'm like, oh, he gave me $50, love. Like, literally, like, three hours later, I see him on Instagram, bro. I'm like, who the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, bro. And that's when Dave sent him in the group chat. He was like, yo, bro, he's a wrestler, Olympian wrestler. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy, but like, yeah. Yeah, Olympian champion, yeah, Olympian champion, like, it's different. There's levels to this. Bro, don't. This is my certain guard, bro. You can't be giving the oh, secrets up. Certain guards, I can't let you know. You know, bars be watching. Nah. <laughs> oh, what type of level do you have to get your ear and cauliflower? I thought they was. I thought it was just pros. I didn't know college you had to get it. Um, well, in college, I mean, most kids get it in high school and college. Uh. Well, you had to pay for that surgery and all that. Like, what is oh it, what no! Is it, it just it just it's from like impact. Hitting your ear a bunch and wrestling and stuff. So like it, you hit it a bunch and then your ear, it uh like the skin separates and mm. blood fills in. So this is all just like dried blood. That's all it is. For real, for real? Inside, yeah, or like dried cartilage and blood. So to make it like, what would you do to make it like crazier and stiffer? Like to make it stiff? Uh, I mean, yeah, just keep getting a hit. Not, I thought it was like a surgery or something mm-hmm. like that. Oh, nah, no, no, I'm gonna be honest with you. I it's it natural. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cause when I cut JB ears the first time, like mind you, I didn't know he was a wrestler. I was like, he was like ears, what? <laughs> shit. I was like, I was like, damn. Like, you probably I thought he even, was an alien, bro. <laughs> I, was like, I don't even know how to do this, bro. That is so funny. Yeah, it's not. It's not a. Uh, yeah, it's not like surgical or anything. You like, you have to you wrestle for so long, and and the better you get, the more likely you, you get it, just because. I mean, the harder wrestling is, like, you're using your head more, mm-hmm. getting your head in there and stuff. Um, so, yeah, so, you could tell a wrestler by, his, like, how much work he put in by his ears. That's what he basically said. Yeah. To an extent, but yeah. You be like, damn, his ears are crazy. Either he's super ass, he get beat up a lot. <laughs> yeah. <or he's> super <laughs> nice. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> he says exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, he either get beat up or he nice as hell. One or the other. Wrestling is a physical sport, man. Mm-hmm. Very physically demanding. It's tough. I mean, think about like, think about doing all the sports you love, 
and then doing them like 15, 20 pounds lighter. And every time you compete, that's what you have to do it at. So like say say before a basketball season you weigh one seventy. Every, every time you have a game, you have to weigh you have to start the game weighing under one fifty five. You hate tripping. <laughs> yeah, that's why I mean that's why it's really important that you do stuff right. Because there are kids who don't and they'll be cutting like twenty pounds a week just because they don't keep their weight under control. You ever had that and, problem? No, I never did. I know better. Some kids don't. They probably been doing this since I was four. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're going to go to another barber, like, let me know. Like, yeah. Like, no, 100%. Because then if anything happened, like, if you get pushed back or anything, I'm like, yo, bro, like, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> you're going to have to wait, like, a week or two until yeah. your, your, your hair grow back because I ain't about to fix what somebody messed up. Yeah. Now, if I mess up, I know I mess up. Yeah, of course. Because I know my haircuts. I was wondering just because, like, I've always seen... I've always seen like comedy skits and stuff like that of people like if they like if they cheat on their barber. <laughs> and that's, if you yeah. cheat on me, don't go anywhere else. Like stay in my barber shop. Yeah. You need to keep the money in the barber shop. That's yeah, right. that's fair. How many times does it take for you to uh, cut somebody's hair before you like you get that like uh, you shouldn't be going to anybody else then? It's not after the first time, is it? Um. Sometimes yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I could be like, yeah, he gonna come back. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You, I guess you kind of like you read them how the, how their experience was. Like when I when I first cut JB. Yeah. But I could tell you like the his haircut. I don't know like right here. I, it's a I think I could tell like with wrestlers, a lot of people. You know what I mean like the more they like the harder the ear is harder to cut. You know what I mean? So yeah. like you could push that shit up high. Yeah. Because you can't bend it down. Yeah. So. I mean, I was like, yeah, he coming back. And then, yeah. like, then he came back, like, the next week, but I wasn't there. I was actually doing an event. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he had got cut from somebody else in the barbershop. And then, I don't know if he ain't like it like that for real, but he had told me, he was like, nah, it wasn't your haircut. Yeah. And then after that, he followed me on Instagram. That's when I really got to see his Instagram. Yeah. Cause I ain't like, mind you, when I told y'all, like, he's a wrestler, I didn't see his Instagram right away. Yeah. It was, um, it was through, like, one of them, like, Ukraine wrestling pages on an explore page. Like, yeah. he just happened to be on it. And I was yeah. like, yo, I cut this boy, like, <laughs> it was, it was crazy. I was, I, I was like, yo, I could have sworn. They was like, yeah, he a wrestler, Olympian. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And then, that's when he gave me his number. So gotcha. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm locked in. He told me you was the one that that's getting a body him, right? Yeah, he bought. All right, all the way down. <laughs> if somebody like in the next few days ends up like getting hurt, or if they miss weight, or let's say like they get COVID or something like that, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna get to wrestle. I'm the first alternate. All right, gotcha. Yeah, so. And that's for your school? Just like the alternate, or just alternate in general? In general. Oh, all right. Yeah. Be crazy if he's the alternate, he wins it all. Yeah. <laughs> He's underdog. I'm gonna go him. Yeah, there was a kid a few years ago who ended up. Uh, he was an alternate, and then somebody got hurt, so he got into the tournament, and then he ended up becoming. He became an All-American, which is like top A. If you if you place at the national tournament, you're an All-American. So he ended up doing that, which was pretty crazy. So you never know. Just give me an opportunity. <laughs> For real, that's all you need is opportunity. Yeah. Well, I'll take a look. That's great, man. Thank you. We didn't expect the program to, to be this when we came here. Mm -hmm. When my dad and I and like my family and community, we all made the decision for me to, to come here. Did you sign? I mean, yeah, you ain't even sign because it's not even like that. I mean, it, it is. You, there was a whole commitment. I was being, um, I was being recruited by NC State. Cornell, Lehigh, Pitt, pretty much all the Ivies, because I had good grades. No good grades. And so there was a there was a commitment aspect to it. But whenever we came here, I mean we we didn't expect it to be this. So whenever JB started coming, JB came here and 
started getting the program together, it was like, wow, we made the right decision. Uh, mm -hmm. You probably won all your matches because your ears not as club as everybody else. I mean, college hour as everybody else. Yeah, I don't got it. My ears are pretty much fine. I had it in my left ear for like a month one time, but I drained it, which hurts a lot. How you how you drained it? Big ass needle. Big do ass yourself. Uh, I got my buddy to do it. I got Ben to do it. The uh, the big guy, two eighty five pounder. I am. Stick a big needle in there and suck out all the blood. And so, if you drain it before it hardens, you can um, you can prevent it from like solidifying mm -hmm. and being like that. But the issue is, after you drain it, yeah. if you like bump it at all, or if you just or if you don't put pressure on it, then it'll blow back up. So what you gotta do is you gotta drain it, and then you get like either magnets or some sort of mold to like hold it in place, so it like re-solidifies as like a normal ear. After it's solidified, you're gonna need plastic surgery. You're probably just gonna keep it. Honestly, I wish I had a little bit of it because you know it's just like a, it's like a sign like don't fuck with that guy. You can either tell that either he's super tough or he's super ass. Yeah, <laughs> he's always getting beat up. Yeah, either he get beat up or he win. I always say I don't wrestle with my ears. That's why I don't get it. I wrestle with my hands. <laughs> That's fire. I've never been lined up like that. That's fire. Hell yeah. Looking good. Get the fade. What is that? I said fade me up. He said I said feed me up. <laughs> That's literally what I said, right? Alright. Fire. Thank you. Already, bro. The pressure, the anxiety, the fear will all subside as soon as the tournament ends. Like it's only temporary. Everything that you feel is only temporary. So when I'm standing in that tunnel and my hands are shaking and I got butterflies, it's going to subside soon. But the only thing that will remain is how I perform. But all the negative emotions will eventually go away. So I try to stay locked in on the moment on what I can control. My effort, my movement, and my willingness to, to give it my all. And then when I step away, I can wipe my hands with it and say, if I was victorious, good for me. If not, I gave all I had. But I've let my anxiety and the pressure sabotage my performance. so much for help. In big moments, because oh, I couldn't control, I didn't have emotional self-control, and I think that the only difference between you know legends and people that no one talks about is execution. To we all train hard, we all believe we can win, we all desire to win, but you just have to, you have to be able to execute and get nervous. It's easy to talk about it in here, it doesn't matter. The stakes are high, and the butterflies are in your belly. Can you die away and stay the course? Wrestling's wrestling, but there's a lot going on. It's a game changer. Feeling good, man. Just working, grinding, man. Trying to be on the wall. I agree. Hear me? Exclusive joints. And he had a ball out here earlier. It's over. I'm gonna hoop ball. Bro, they let me hoop in the gym. You sweaty and shit for no reason. Nigga, I said I was cutting, but I ain't even get busy yet. Spray a girl joint. Huh? Spray a girl joint. No, it is a girl joint. I can feel it. It's on small. It's on fucking. Damn. Damn. Yeah. I'm the cameraman now. Stop playing with me. That's how that jump be. Mind you. Jim! Come on, right here. Got you, got you. Got you. 
I gotta get a shot in. Okay. Backward? No. Oh, it's backward. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Die! I'm not sure we're gonna do that. Got canceled, so we still have him. We still want to, though. What's our game? Who are you, bro? <laughs> you don't wanna do it? Yeah, we still wanna do it. Auction them off and make a profit. <laughs> I mean, we could probably auction them off and make more money and then buy more shoes for the kids. No, what do you mean? Yeah, that makes sense. That's what we were gonna do. We were gonna sell. Well, this was Kevin's idea. We were gonna set up a Venmo, and then at the match, mm -hmm. you could buy a raffle ticket. So, like, let's say we sell ten five dollar raffle tickets, you get fifty. That'd be fifty bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. I do. So, like, we sell. If you set up the Venmo, and you only get like, there's only like four people in it, you're like. No, I think we could get. If you just announce like actually like. No. no. I bet you if they were ten dollar tickets, we could sell a hundred. Hell yeah. Especially like with the Venmo, then like they could have posted it on uh, social media and stuff. Like people don't even have to necessarily be at the match. Yeah. Sheesh! Damn, I look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to do kind of like. Fade it up, but kind of keep it a little longer to like here, like kind of like it blends in a little longer. Mm -hmm. And maybe just a little bit shorter on top. Alright, guys, finish. Thank you. Man, I feel good. This rain up a check at UPenn. Shout out to my man JB. Showed me some love. Told me to come through. I got them right, they got me right. So that's all I can really say. Bro, bro. How you feeling today? I feel good. I feel good. You know what I mean? My man got the jump shot. We got to play ball. <laughs> we get free halal. Nah, I'm playing. We ain't get no free halal. God, you've been missed. Yeah, now we just enjoying the street. We walked this much? What you mean? I said we walked this much? Yeah, then we went all the way down that way. Alright, now we about to go back to the shop. Back to the vibes. Cause you know the vibes. Pull up on my man Dave. See what he doing. Shot better be done, bro. Had the whole day to yourself. Wrapping it up. Y'all already know I had a long day. Been up since 5 in the morning. Had to meet my man G. Shout out to the cameraman. At 7 in the morning at the barbershop. Shout out to the UPenn guys. I cut about 14 people today. Including like coaches. Like three coaches. Got them right. Big shout out to my man Jordan. JB. If you know him, if you don't, all I see is gold. Shout out to him because he had pulled up. I mean, I pulled up. He basically called me to go to University of Penn to cut like about 14 wrestlers in, for nationals. So shout out to him for giving me the opportunity. This is um, a big step in my career. Hopefully, I start to take off and going from there. Had to cut them with the Andes. I bought these joints brand new. Had to make sure they had lined them up right, and they got them right. They got me right. They didn't feed me though. I got to play basketball though.